action. Welcome to Ready Room Time. We're in the Black Aces Ready Room aboard the USS Hornet. This is a new feature where we're offering uh, tours uh, and lectures of the missions that occurred on board the USS Hornet. Here's a little history of the USS Hornet. A little tour of the flight deck, San Francisco in the background, our display aircraft on the flight deck. Hornet served honorably in World War II, earned many battle awards and served three tours in Vietnam and was of course the primary recovery ship for Apollo 11 and Apollo 12. This is what the ship, the carrier looks like on the inside. At the top, we see the flight deck where we have uh, the catapults up forward, the elevators, the arresting gear back aft. The middle picture is the hangar deck this is where aircraft are stored and maintained. This is also the armored deck of the carrier. The second deck is below the hangar deck. And this is where the berthing spaces, feeding spaces, all the other spaces below. The picture of the outside of the ship underway at the front, we have the bow. We have the two catapults where we launch aircraft. The island is where the captain and the admiral reside. It's also where the air traffic control uh, live. They direct the traffic, aircraft traffic in the local area. The arresting gear back aft and the stern, and you see an aircraft poised for landing in the arresting gear. A little history about me. I spent 21 years in the Navy as an ASW pilot, served on the Hornet from 1967 to 1969. As I said, I was aboard for Apollo 11. I was the ordnance officer in charge of everything that goes bang on the ship. I qualified as an officer of the deck underway, and I was uh, a pilot qualified to fly the ship's aircraft. After the uh, recovery of Apollo 11, I left the ship and went to an ASW squadron, BS-33, returned to uh, back to Hornet and did some ASW, uh, very interesting ASW operations. I then deployed on the USS Ticonderoga with BS-33 and after that tour, I spent four years in Japan with Commander Fleet Air Western Pacific. My last tour was with the uh, Naval Air Station Point Lagoo. I was the station security officer and the station security manager. My first carrier, USS Kearsarge, CVS-33 in VS-21. My last carrier, USS Ticonderoga, CVS-14, with VS-33. These are the planes that we had on board Hornet. On the left is the Grumman C-1A COD transport. We could haul cargo, passengers, and we were the ship's own uh, transportation service. On the left is a US-2B that has been uh, a utility aircraft that we kept aboard the ship from time to time to provide other services uh, to the ships that are in company and to the carrier itself. This is an S2E tracker, ASW airplane. The picture of the cockpit there. 26 tons for mission ready, twin engine, crew of four, we have an endurance of five plus hours. We have radar detection equipment. Uh, we have torpedoes. We have depth charges. We can find submarines 
and if we have to, attack them. This is a pilot's briefing room. This is where we come before our missions to get our instructions on what we're supposed to do uh, during our flight. We have a briefing officer who gets a very, all the detailed information, comes down and presents it to us here. Uh, we get weather information, we get maintenance information, which airplanes we're supposed to fly. But the briefing officer is the key man because he knows he has gone to get uh, the detailed information from the Combat Information Center. This is where uh, all the information comes, the tactical information, where, where we're located, where we think the submarines are, where we think they're coming from. You notice all these nice boards that we have on there that are showing information. Remember that the guy that's writing the information is on the back side of it and he has to write backwards. This is what CIC will look like if you come and visit our ship. Here is where we get our ASW assignment. We know which ships we're going to be working with, which aircraft we're going to be working with, and if we're training, which submarines we're going to be working with. Here's a walk around the flight deck. The island structure. Radar masts, that's where the, the tower controllers are. Radar dome, the F-8, the F-14, our flight deck, landing area, and the helicopter Simulation for the recovery helicopter for Apollo 11 and Apollo 12. Now we're up on a flight deck. We're getting ready to go on our mission. And this is where we, the action starts. We have a lot of people up on the flight deck and this is a very dangerous place. It has been called the most dangerous place in the military with the exception of actual combat. And why is that? Well, it's because we have a lot of things going on and a lot of very dangerous things going on. We have great big meat cleavers swinging around. We have people moving around. We have airplanes moving. Everything from high-powered vacuum cleaners, to hot jet exhaust, to these propellers. Notice the crewman is walking around with a fire bottle getting ready to start the starboard engine. We'll get the wings spread, then we'll start taxiing forward. And here is where we get ready to get started into the air. We have a lot of people up there helping us. They get the airplane hooked up onto the catapult. In the meantime, the other aircraft are moving up right behind. 
so that we can take off in very limited amount of time. Notice the guy in the yellow shirt over there directing the aircraft. You'll see him again. There he is, he's holding one plane. Now he's getting ready to taxi him forward. Notice the wind that's blowing on this guy. And there's the catapult shot. And this is what a catapult shot looks like from inside the airplane. This guy is known as the shooter. He's the guy who gives us the power signal. We go up to full power. And then we are, he gives a signal for launch. Okay, here we go. Power up. Pilot salutes. He's ready and he launches. And here we go. How about a two, two and a half G launch? Nice kick in the pants. Here's a little bit of information about the Grumman tracker. We have four crewmen on board, two pilots and two sensor operators. This is what it kind of looks like in flight. The Ray Dome is down, the Mad Boom is hot, and they've got a contact that they're going to go investigate. And there's his play partner. Now, how do we find submarines? Well, we use sound. And to do that, we need sonoboys. These are our sound detectors on the left-hand side, the picture on the left-hand side. On the right-hand side, we see a, a red device in the back. That is a Russian sonoboy that we uh, captured. And the sonoboy in front of it is a cutaway so you can see what the sonoboy looks like on the inside. Basically, it is a microphone, a hydrophone that goes down in the water and a radio transmitter. The hydrophone listens for sounds. It's transmitted back up to the radio transmitter, which transmits it the information to the aircraft. And here's what it's like inside. The picture on the left is the uh, radar and magnetic detection operator. Uh, he has a radar screen up at the top and he may detect a submarine if it's foolish enough to stick something up. Uh, but the magnetic anomaly detection device is uh, housed in the boom that you see in the bottom there uh, and the center picture. It is a very sensitive device. It detects large quantities of metal and such as a submarine. When you fly over it, you know uh, a signal is sent to the detection uh, pen there, and it makes a mark on the paper trace, and you know you've got a MAD contact. And if we are cleared, we can then execute an attack by dropping a torpedo. We can also use depth charges. And if a, if a sub is on the surface, uh, we can use rockets. Here's our Mark 46 acoustic torpedo. It's a very smart, very fast torpedo. Uh, we use it in, in airplanes, we use it on submarines, and we also use it on ships. It has its own internal tracking system. Once it gets into the water, it starts looking for a contact and it will home in on that contact very quickly. There's our training target, our friendly submarine, this is the guy we play with. They learn from us, we learn from them. But here's the real target. This is a Yankee class submarine, Russian submarine. 
they are often on patrol. Uh, Russian submarines are often on patrol off our east coast and our west coast, trying to keep track of what we are doing, what we're playing with. Uh, they like to hang around off Vandenberg and see what kind of missiles we're testing. And it's always fun to be able to catch up with one of these guys. Okay, after we've done our mission, we're ready to come home. Uh, this is where the bunk is. This is where the food is. So you got to get back to the ship. And to do that, we fly in a very nice formation here. While we're getting the deck ready for recovery, there is a clear deck. The optical landing system that gives the pilot guidance on his glide slope to make a safe landing. Here's an E2 coming in for a landing. Radar plane. And here's our formation of S2s coming in. They will fly past the ship, break into the downwind landing pattern. And there's the first S2 coming aboard. Good landing. This is the guy that helps us, the LSO, the guy in the center with the radio phone there. He helps us land and he gives the pilot the signal and it's cleared to land. Another S2 coming in. But this guy doesn't get to land. There was a red light there, foul deck. So he had to go around, come, by, come around and try again. This time, good landing. And this is what a carrier landing will look like from the pilot's point of view. Here we are lined up on the center line. Uh, our reference lines on the left-hand side of the ship is the optical landing system. Uh, the meatball is lined up with the green reference lines. And this is what a pilot, where the pilot has to maintain everything like this to make a successful landing. Little stack gas right there. And there's the full stop landing. Now, people will often say, does a carrier rock and roll? Well, the upper left hand picture there is uh, taken on the flight deck. The uh, guys are standing there, they're standing straight up, but you'll notice the deck is angled and they are moving around a little bit. On the right-hand side, you'll see that the carrier is getting ready to launch an airplane, but there's water coming over the bow. And the center picture is a video of things that didn't go quite right. There we go, he's doing a deck launch. And there is a huge splash and wait for it. There he goes out the other side. The pilots did get wet. I have some pretty pictures here, VS-33 information. And my favorite picture, the sunset recovery. Uh, I happen to be a little prejudiced about that because I was flying the airplane. And Apollo 11, uh, the experience of that, uh, there's President Nixon and his country of fo uh, folks, friends there, uh, Kissinger, Admiral McCain, a bunch of other people there. Uh, a little secret, I was standing right up above him when they took that picture uh, because I had been relieved of the my bridge, bridge watch, and I just hung around for to see what was going on. 
On the right hand side, there's the module splashing down in the water. You notice the big orange parachutes there. Uh, it was kind of a cloudy day that day. Uh, we really couldn't see much of anything until the uh, module and parachutes popped through the clouds and everybody cheered at that time. There's a capsule. This is a uh, Apollo module that was used in practice, uh, learning how to pick the module up. Uh, I show this for reference because I want you to observe uh, the interior of the capsule. Notice the three seats tight, tight, uh, tight close together there. Uh, the uh, astronauts had to be good friends uh, because you were going to be very, very close to each other. There is the module in the water. Uh, the recovery process was pretty complex because we had to make sure that everything was sanitary. Uh, the scientists had no idea what we might possibly bring back from the moon, whether there were any bad germs there, or bad viruses, whatever. So we uh, were doing some very careful processes to make sure that we didn't contaminate uh, the rest of the Earth. And in order to do that, we had divers in the water. Uh, they had with them a suit called a biological isolation garment, a big rubber suit that they tossed into the uh, module and the astronauts put them on while they were inside the module. Here is a, one of the astronauts being lifted up into the helicopter. Notice he's hanging on for dear life and he's wearing the rubber suit. Here we are. This is the flight deck and all of our visitors and watchers. The helo coming back in. President Nixon pointing. Greeting the folks. And then we'll be going down on the hangar, uh, the hangar deck uh, through the number two elevator. Here we are. Now, take a look at those rubber suits. Those are the suits that the divers were wearing uh, when they went out to uh, the module. Uh, and there's the module on the right hand side. We're lifting it out of the flotation gears, getting ready to put it on its transportation module. And I I bring all this out because those rubber suits must have been awful to put on inside that cramped little module. Here they go. Coming out of the helicopter, walking into the uh, mobile quarantine facility. The man in the orange flight suit is a flight surgeon. He was with them in case there was any problems that came up. There was also a technician inside the uh, quarantine facility to take care of any uh, technical problems that might occur. Now we're getting set for President Nixon to come down and greet them. This is a mobile quarantine facility that we have on board Hornet. You'll see the presidential seal there on the door. The story behind that is that the next day after the recovery, I got a call from Air Ops asking if I could take a flight to uh, Johnson Island. And I said, sure, I can. And I said, what's the mission? And they said, I've got, they've got two passengers and a package that have to get to Johnson Island. Oh, OK. Uh, and this is the airplane that they had assigned to me. You notice it's kind of painted a funny color that's not the typical kind of airplane that you would think about. So I went up to the flight deck and met the two passengers that I had. And I, who are you guys? And we're 
Well, they said we're secret service. And I said, oh, uh, what's in the package? And they said, that's the presidential seal. Oh, OK. Uh, what What's going on? And I said, well, we have to guard the presidential seal until we get it back to Washington. I said, OK. So I got them into their flight gear and briefed them on the flight and uh, told them that we were going to get into this little airplane and sit in the back seats there. And we were going to be launched off the front end of the ship with a catapult launch. And then we were going to fly into Johnson Island. It was about a two hour flight uh, over the water. And I got the feeling of apprehension from these two gentlemen that they were not quite sure whether they were uh, uh, going to be able to handle this because they were used to big airplanes and long runways. Here were two guys who were sworn to take a bullet for the president, but they weren't quite sure whether they were going to take a cat shot. Oh, end of recording. Thank <laughs> you.